The whole Port-au-Prince area out to Laogon, about 20 miles out, that whole area was just still devastated. At that time, very little rubble had been removed. It looked almost like it did just a day after the earthquake. So your first reaction is there's just no way to bootstrap this thing. You can, we need to somehow get a do-over. It seemed to us that with the, with the earthquake kind of flattening the infrastructure, it was time to address the, the needs of children, the poverty, most people living on about $2 a day, uh, an education system that's uh, really run by private, non-government organizations, not by the government. It's really run by charities, by missions organizations, NGOs. How can we help their families? In other words, their parents need work. 60 to 70% unemployment, in a country of 10 million people, about 100,000 on the radar tax-paying jobs. That's it, in a country of 10 million. In some small way, could we help see businesses grow and jobs created for the parents? Need help, sir? Uh, barely make it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Welcome to Jeremy. Then, of course, the other institution is not just the family, but the family of families, the church. Uh, what could we do to strengthen the church in Hayden? Uh, this is probably our particular expertise, my particular interest, and I was doing this degree in church-based theological education. And it seemed that this Jeremy, this Jeremy League of Pastors was inviting us in to do both pastor training and to do economic development training. Jeremy is far enough away, about an eight-hour drive from Port Prince, out on the western peninsula, southern peninsula. It wasn't directly devastated by the earthquake, but it did take a marginal government with marginal services and completely shut it down. That was the impetus out here in Jeremy for the churches to come together. They formed the uh, Federation of the League of Pastors of the Grand Dance region. I'd have to say what turns the corner for me is when I meet uh, Haitian leaders. Uh, you know, I meet someone like uh, Oscar. I meet someone like uh, Daniel. We met leaders who were running uh, tent camps right after the earthquake, young leaders, 30 years old, uh, educated in the States and could have immigrated to the States but have stayed here. Uh, that's really what gives me hope, is uh, the, the problems are enormous. The infrastructure is almost non-existent. But you will meet uh, Haitian leaders, men and women, who are committed to their country. They're committed to do something that will make a difference long term. And those are the kind of people we want to work with and partner with, and those are the kind of people that give me hope for Haiti. a dream about what we want to establish yeah. here yeah. by not just providing the tools and train them but, mm. but help them to stretch yes. uh, themselves and, and take the leadership yes. so really it's to build a national group of leaders yes. so that way so we can work with them. We have formed ourselves into a cohort and we have a distinctive learning process. It's a process of reading scripture, reading some theology and then coming together for Socratic discussion. It's a mutual learning process in a learning community that's committed to the process, not studying again the systematic theology we're mostly used to, but instead studying biblical theology. We've been doing that now for a little over a year and a half. The material we're using is from the Biblical Institute of Leadership Development out of Ames, Iowa, and they offer a certificate at level one, two, and three. Just this summer, they finished their first level of training. What I discovered is that I wasn't properly educated about evangelization. Now I have discovered the true principles of evangelization and what evangelization is really about. I used to do it on my own way and take part of the gospel. Now I have I find a way to get the whole gospel. And the way I understand it now, I want the whole country to get it. 
as these pastors are training other pastors, they're also using it in their churches. Elders, deacons, leaders, women leaders, Sunday school teachers. And they're reporting back to us that this discipleship material is really uh, having a maturing effect in their churches. Is Some of them are even using the word revival, that it's changing their own preaching as they themselves go through the material and find uh, you know, a deeper understanding of the New Testament teaching. We appreciate the presence of your organization in our country in a particular way. In the past, we used to pay to go to university to get that formation. Now you bring it to us. That is a real plus. This is something we receive with an open arm. Yeah, you said basically you're the first group yeah. Yeah. that has been sensitive yeah. to the cultural elements oh, since <laughs> among all the people that we've been we've been working, and yeah. I think I think we value it. Mm -hmm. This is a high value, and you guys keep time to read, understand. So, and we haven't seen that much doing in the past. We're the first since Paul. <laughs> they said to us basically that they had never experienced missionaries treating them like this. That, that chokes you up a little bit just thinking about it, right? Because uh, they, they've dealt with a lot of leaders and a lot of missionaries over the years. Well, so is that because uh, we're so good? I don't think so. I think it does come from some deep convictions about the church, about pastors and leaders, that whatever color your skin is, uh, whatever denomination, whatever your level of formal education is. If you're, if you're an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher in the church of God, you're, you're not some immature child that needs to be talked down to. Uh, and that's, that's our conviction, so we love these men. Our friend uh, and partner and really uh, the leader of, of this initiative in many ways is Mulry Jean-Pierre, a pastor out of Brooklyn. Born in Haiti, raised in Brooklyn. Uh, he had been preaching in Laogan, and some of his sermons about bringing economic uh, development to Haiti as well as gospel preaching to Haiti, some of his sermons got uh, put on cassette tapes and somehow, through friends or connections, found their way out here. He didn't know anyone out here. They have a little radio station here in Jeremy, one of the churches we work with. They began to broadcast some of his sermons that they had gotten from Laogan on cassette tape on radio. Then the local pastor here showed up in Brooklyn on a visit to the U.S. because he had heard these tapes. So they, they developed a relationship and they invited Mullery if he would come the next time he was in Haiti out here to Jeremy. And we were with him because we were exploring this partnership back in 2010, 2011. And we came with him and made a presentation out here about both uh, pastoral theological training and about the idea of business development. And we actually brought some of the Partners Worldwide guys with us. And I had several folks from my church, and uh, Mulry had several from his. Well, that would have been fall, I believe, of 2011. And within about three or four months, we had, to, we had decided to accept the invitation of this Federation of the League of Pastors of the Grand Danse region of Haiti. Uh, they like long titles. They invited us if we would come and begin the training both on both ends of it. And so that's, that's how we got here. And to us, it's actually important it's important to us that we were invited. The leaders behind me are the leaders of the Federation of the Leagues of Pastors of the Grand Danse region. Uh, these men, and when they're all here, some are still coming in this morning, uh, there'll be about 25 of them. They represent over 500 churches. They represent over 1,600 pastors. We have spent the last two days with six of these men, kind of the core of the core. Well now today, today is Friday, we'll spend all day today and all day tomorrow with these 25 men. And often there are some women here, right now they're just men. Uh, and we are training them. Now they have each committed to train 10 other pastors. They're currently averaging training eight other pastors. So there are roughly 25 men here, but they have another 200 pastors in training. Those 200 pastors have also been challenged to train 10 other pastors. We're early in that process. We are hoping they will average six to eight, each one. And so that will mean that we will eventually have almost all of the 1,600 pastors in this federation in training. 
Pastor Nelson, congratulations. Very good. Thank you very much. So I want to create the environment that I didn't find for myself because I just figured it out by myself. I wish I could have mentor and people that will that will say this is this is the direction you need to go. So the reason why I'm here, so I think we can provide this kind of a element where they can find you know tools and a structure, a way to think, to discover and, and pursue what they think they need to pursue. We kind of style the whole effort to our church as uh, uh, children, parents, and pastors. And we were hoping it would help Lake Valley get real one-minded as a church. And we went to the end of 2011. We, did, uh, we decided to sponsor some children through World Vision because they had helped us get engaged down here and had helped us meet partners down here. And so uh, Lake Valley uh, did a, 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 what they call a Hope Sunday, and we sponsored 150 Haitian children through Lake Valley in one Sunday. And that was exciting for the church for several reasons. One is just helping young children through the World Visions programs. And also just the one-mindedness, it, it just brought a lot of focus to Lake Valley. We're a church of six or 700 adults, 500 any given Sunday. And to, to, out of a church of that size to sponsor 150 children, it really brings a lot of cohesiveness to what we were doing in terms of mission, in terms of relief and development. Our children are up in the Central Highlands area of Haiti, up near a city called Hinch in the Central Highlands, the Central Plateau, uh, north and northeast of Port-au-Prince. We're pleased that, at the children that have been sponsored and the families that continue to sponsor. And it released, frankly, it released just a lot of um, money out of Lake Valley. Didn't hurt the offering. It was new money that was just coming out of the generous hearts of the people both at Lake Valley and then at First Baptist Church. We looked at World Vision uh, to you know, give a good opportunity for people in the church to donate, sponsor children. Uh, we knew we had this, this training that we've been doing for our own uh, business leaders and leaders in our church that would be great for pastors to have. But we were a little short on what to do about the whole marketplace idea, the training of businessmen, business leaders. And so really, we were just scanning the internet to see what we could find. And I, I basically just stumbled across this, this organization called Partners Worldwide. Drew would go to uh, in the um, Arkansas Church Lake Valley. They become one of the partners that we have implementing the 100,000 job program we have in Haiti. And the idea of partnership with the right strategy has been so viable. We really like the partners worldwide and their approach. So uh, we uh, signed up to be a, a global affiliate. That's their terminology with them. And that means that uh, business uh, men and women from Lake Valley uh, were eager to share their business expertise. They didn't have to go off to Bible college to do ministry. They were able to share what they knew how to do, which is business. And we had several uh, business men and women couples from Lake Valley who really had been on the sidelines to some degree who suddenly were very engaged in this idea of sharing their business expertise. My early age was a little bit difficult for me. I had to leave home at 10 years old to look for something to do. My parents couldn't afford to take care of me or send me to school. I had to leave to go out to find things to do to earn some money to pay for tuition for school or to help my family. Thank God, things changed. My dream was to have my own business. I work as a black maker, so later I started my own. I am not go a good technician. I do not really have these skills. But if I could find somebody who could give me a better technique, I could do better every day. Partners Worldwide, the way we're doing it in Haiti, not only we're looking to create sustainable jobs, but we're also trying to change the people that we're working with. Today we cover about eight different cities in, in, in Haiti. Within those cities, we have ongoing business training covering tools such as uh, accounting, basic accounting, uh, management principles and 
and finance and marketing for these businesses to improve and create more employment. With me still being involved in the marketplace, still being a businessman, having a lot of experience in different types of businesses, it just became a natural fit that not only could I be involved with the pastor training, but I could also be involved in training businessmen to come to some kind of understanding of a bigger picture than just making money. And we're going down into uh, the city of Jeremy to meet with some potential business relations. These guys have different types of businesses in Jeremy. And Oscar and I are hoping that they will all do the training with partners worldwide. Oscar and I have been working in Lagon for almost three years and we're going to hand that affiliate off and uh, start fresh with this affiliate here in Jeremy with a whole new concept. They can make Haiti one of the greatest places on earth. Today, we met for the first time with a brand new group of about a dozen businesses. And we rented a little little room at a restaurant and we sat down and we presented to them okay. this well, idea. I said there was two parts to the training. One is pure business training and the other is wisdom training. We want them, them to be them? able to take what we're going to deliver from the scriptures and understand that that's wisdom for living. That's wisdom for running their businesses. And with the wisdom training, improve your life, relationship with your wife and your children. So as we discussed it and laid out the plan, they had some great questions, great feedback. We kind of described to them how it would work, how often I would come. That I will be committed to be here about five times a year to help mentor you how often Oscar would come, what kind of training they would receive from Partners Worldwide, what kind of training they would receive from our team in the way of wisdom training. And then we closed with a prayer for the businesses. And we feel like it was a really successful meeting. And Father, I pray that you would bless their businesses. With the ethical aspect of the church, combined with the intentional aspect of encouraging business development, we can be sure that we can have a good workforce and, and, and uh, a, a better country for the next generations. To me, this is a crucial project because if it does go well and Partners Worldwide adopts this plan, they could do it all over the world in every country they're in. God is concerned about this world. He's concerned about Haiti, that the men and women and children of Haiti have enough to eat. He is concerned and cares that their government often acts unjustly. He is concerned that they have almost denuded the landscape of trees, just trying to burn some charcoal to make a few pennies. It's his island. Doesn't belong to Haiti, it's his. And he is concerned about his people, his creatures, that are on it and he is concerned about the land itself. That's gospel.